Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I feel like I'm in a <laughs> We're jamming. We're jamming in the kitchen. Woo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Well, we are here to the hot spot. That's right. Awesome. Yeah. Real men make quiche. That's yeah. That's true. Re Real like men know water. all kinds of things about eggs. Know your huevos is my motto. And uh, <laughs> men, if you don't know your huevos, you're in big trouble. <laughs> yes, don't jangle your huevos just anywhere. No, you know how to keep them solid if they're hard boiled, soft boiled if they're not, and you know how to quiche them up and... If you can't make an omelet, I don't know why I'm talking to you. I mean, how are you going to how are you going to impress her the next morning if you can't omelet? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, yeah. but we're but we're queeching. You're queeching? That doesn't that doesn't sound appetizing at all. That sounds like a that sounds like an accident in a movie theater. The um, oh, yes. never. Um, uh, yes. I was waiting tables. That's what somebody called it one time. I'll have Queech. the queechy. I'll have the queechy. Yeah, it's like somebody who says quesadilla. My dad at one point <laughs> was interviewing a dude for a job at his architectural firm, and he takes guys to lunch and kind of gets to like you know he's got to deal with these guys over time, right? And he was this guy was really solid, and then he ordered the quesadilla, and I was sitting there with my dad, and I'm like. <laughs> I, no. 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 <laughs> Bless like his heart. Dynamite. I mean, it was in Kentucky, so that might have been the law down there. Hey, man, yeah. we're gonna find you fifty dollars <laughs> if you pronounce quesadilla properly. Um, there is. Well, you got well. peeps watching. We got peeps watching us today. They're saying hi. Wow, they're saying hi so fast I can't keep up. I understand <laughs> that. Hi, peeps. Hello. <laughs> um, but we're is... glad you're all here. Thanks. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it's one of the key things about cooking is take your ring off and put it in your in your ring pocket, which is what oh, the little thing for well, this is. Yeah. Anyone who watches me knows I I kind of make pasta with my jewelry on. He does. That's, yeah. well, <laughs> pasta for jewel, as they call it. The uh, um, it's always you should always uh, the coroner should always be able to tell what you were cooking the night before when they find your body. I I think always a little bit in the nails, maybe some in the hair. Perhaps, you know, you don't want to have to dig in your molars to figure out what you had for dinner. They just want to look at the ring. Under oh, your nails. Oh, Under ravioli. <laughs> right. Why so, made ravioli have a bite in ravioli? Right. So this is, uh, we're, we're going to make a couple of things. I suppose we should sort of get at it. I don't, you know, some of these things take a while. What do you, what do you, what kind of quiche are you making, Hal? You know what I mean. Hold on. Let me set this up. This is uh, what you would call a crust. That I'm doing this little little pie crust. Did you make it? Did you I, make it? I I mixed it, flattened it, and rolled it out. It is not a from Perfect. scratch, but it okay. is a mixture okay. rolled out. Okay. There you go. So that's legit. And that's hey, legit. Hey, good to see you. Oh, I can't stop lying, and a couple other folks are jumping in there with us. Bless you. Yeah. Uh, they, they're coming over from the hot from the infotainment wars stream that I had to jump off early so I could come over and cook with you guys. Nice. Um, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So, yes, Al did play a character called Donald Davenport. It's true. Absolutely. It's there, true. There's going to be a bunch we, of that. We have a friend actually named Donald, Donald Davenport. Davenport. Really? Yes. <laughs> was it Donald? It was Donald who asked you that question. Donald this, asked me that question. Is he yeah. this smart and good looking? That must be rough. How, did, how does he live up to the standard I've set? He Not makes only me, silly. but he Fred Gwynn. Silly. You know that, that Fred Gwynn and I. The one thing that Fred Gwynn, Herman Munster, and I yeah. share, besides yeah. obviously height, uh, <laughs> is the fact that we both played a character named Donald Davenport. Um, put this in here for a split second. Oh, yeah. Knew. Did you, uh, if you have anybody ever watched um, Secret of My Success, the yeah. uh, um, yeah, early Michael Fox. J. Fox movie yeah. with Helen Slater, yeah. asked by her mother, how did she ever get the role? And um, <laughs> no, she's, she's terrific. She and Christian are fantastically talented. I do that thing where, as a guy, I forget and leave a thing in, and I heat up the oven, and there's a hot pan in there. Nope. You know that one? I do that you, all the nobody time. does that. I'm Just so me. <laughs> um, yeah. Stay there. I already right. know. So, um, some people will tell you uh, 
that um, when you make a quiche or any kind of, you know, savory pie, anything warm, is you want to pre-bake the, mm -hmm. the crust a little bit because it can be a little soggy in the bottom. So while we Correct. Up, what I do is I do a full pre-bake because that's doing insane. It. Need, <laughs> see, that to do that fully, you need one of those little crust covers, which is yes. so like, and it's like, unless you've got one we, like woven by an Amish woman, it's going to be plastic, like, or silicone or whatever. And I'm like, that doesn't seem right okay, to me. Okay, you want to know a trick? You could put... Oh, do you I? Could put, yes, you could put a piece of tinfoil in there and put rice or beans in it. Oh, to weigh it down? Yeah, correct. Yeah, the the uh, pie weights, work. right. People yes. people do that with marbles, and then you have with hot marbles, like, all over your face. Yeah, right. no, don't. You don't understand at all. Um, so, all right. So the primary thing with a quiche is, and this is, this, me learning how to do a quiche stemmed from a very specific thing. One is, I grew up in the 80s when the book Real Men Eat Quiche came out, if you'll recall. Big yuppie dish. Yes. <laughs> but also, um, I grew up, my dad and our family, we lived primitive three times a year at Friendship, Indiana. We would, you know, we would shoot muskets. I'm a member of the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association. I have been since I was wow. eight years old. I, my first rifle was a flintlock. Um, I, my family have traditional buckskins that have been passed down through our family for multiple generations that we wear when we camp in a teepee. I'm not kidding. It's wow. not a joke. <laughs> um, and so we make, we make, you know, like when, like kettle cakes and all kinds of stuff like that, like primitive food. Just mm -hmm. what you can do with basic ingredients. And as a quarantine, I didn't know what, where you were going. I didn't know if you were going to Wait, I'm not hearing you. What did you say? Caveman or you were talking like, you know, Little House on the Prairie. I'm not hearing her for some reason. So oh, I'm oh, sure it's bad. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. She said, were you Little House on the Prairie? Yeah, very, <laughs> very Little House on the Prairie, uh, except without the house. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> So anyways, I, I literally, it's one of the reasons I don't talk about my family when I do my stand-up is because no one would understand. Usually when people are like, you know, I'm Italian, people are Italian, everybody's like, ha ha, I know what Italians are like. If I explain my family upbringing, everybody just stares at me like a deer in the street, you know, just like, I don't understand the words and the order they're coming out of your face. So <laughs> having grown up with that and then getting, and when, when quarantine came along, I started looking into base foods that are easy to like staples that are part mm -hmm. of traditional foods that have been around for a long time that I can start cooking that are and are pleasurable, interesting, good flavors. You can put a lot of variety into them, but are something that anybody can make kind of in the world of how like tacos and stuff and, uh, and a decent right. sandwich, you have to be able to construct a de decent it sandwich. But yeah, <laughs> it's amazing who can't. Um, so I started like, you know what, I would, I'd like to learn how to make a quiche. I think that'd be a great little addition to those kind of things. Because ultimately, we eat a lot of eggs around here. But I'm, I can omelet like an mf -er. So I'm like, okay, this will be uh, how I you know, upgrade that level so that even if we're eating the same thing staple-wise, it's more enjoyable, right? Uh -huh. Those kind of basic parts, right? And so I'm like, I'm going to up my game in that. So I started looking into a bunch of like traditional Scottish dishes, traditional French dishes, you know, stuff that like poor people made in the 1700s. And I'm like, I'm pretty certain no matter how bad it gets, I can scrounge up those ingredients and we can be all fancy while the world burns around us. So as a theory, it works very well. So what you're basically making with a quiche though, essentially is a highfalutin omelet and a crust. So it kind of takes a little bit of the, I mean, there's a little more to it, but not a ton. Yeah. And in the process of making it, um, if you picture it like a big omelet, it, it's not as intimidating. It's just like an omelet. Yeah, not bake. Oh, yeah. Right. So in doing that, what, uh, what I will start the process in doing is most people will do a three egg quiche because they're fairly dense like this. I like to add four eggs just because it's a little more substantial as a food stuff. Look out. Yeah. I've made a six egg right. quiche. That was a nightmare. It was a big puffy monstrosity. So <laughs> I've settled over time to, on the four egg quiche. Now, um, there's, a, there's not a ton to this um, in the beginning. So we'll, I'm, uh, we'll just keep chatting while I'm doing these kind of things. But 
I don't know. Well, I can, can he not hear me? Your, four eggs, just like you would I do a bigger one. <laughs> can you hear Lisa? Can you no, hear me? You I can't hear Lisa hear for some reason. It's very weird. Okay, but they can hear you on YouTube, so I will repeat if you have a question. Right, yes, okay. translate. Be the Lisa translator. Right. I don't know. <laughs> Where are you, Lisa, <laughs> with the eggs and the situation? All right. We'll figure it out. I'm, I guarantee it will kick in at some point. But It's been like this. You were having trouble with YouTube earlier, weren't you? Yes, YouTube was being very odd uh, earlier, yeah. but luckily everybody jumped over to Twitch really quick and that benefited me uh, long term. Now, uh, basically you're going to be making a cheese omelet with this situation. So it's really to flavor how much you would add to a four egg omelet, what, you know, in your mind what that is. The only difference is you're going to add about a cup and a half of milk or heavy cream. Now, okay. heavier the cream, the thicker this thing will be. A lighter quiche will have more milk. Uh, it, a, a more dense, tart-like thing will have more cream, but it will be thicker and richer and whatever. So I say basically cut it two-thirds. Two-thirds milk, one-third cream, whatever your amount is. And it's a cup and a half okay. for okay. three eggs. And I keep it at that with the four eggs. So, so you have evidently made quite a few quiches to figure this out. Yes, I did. I've tried several. I had... Hey, I had nine failures on almost every dish that I know how to make almost in a row. <laughs> only made, nine? Yeah, only nine. That's right. I learned my lesson after the first three. Three rounds of three mistakes, that's enough for anybody. So being a Freemason, I have, this is true. Mason jar! I have a mason jar that has, that are all mixing cups. Oh my God! Oh, yes, so, I had that when I gave it away for Christmas. I love this thing. I also have yeah, two cool. salt shakers that are mason, little mini mason jars. It's a thing. But He's this is the cup, and this is that. the half a cup underneath it. Hello, right? mini mason jar, right here. Love it. Right. So <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a one and a half. <laughs> da -da -da, da -da -da. We'll set those there. All right. Check on something. That's fine. All right. Now you I'm not want to see what you're doing. All right. I'm not going to. Unlike normal, I'm not going to leave this in here because I don't want it to jerk out on me. This is coming up the side. I don't have any marbles, so I lost them. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I find them, I'll return them. Yes. <laughs> Calm that down right there. Cool that out. And then I'll peel that side up on the sides once I'm ready to go. Um, or I might have to, because I didn't have any marbles in there. I'll, let it in a second and I'll do it. So, a uh, cup and a half of whatever. So, I'm going to do... Half a cup of heavy cream. Okay. Right? And a cup of milk. That'll be the okay. mix. So we'll do that. Uh, this now is, you guys can see what he's doing because he's actually doing something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually doing something. So now he's cream. actually doing something. Right. So I'll pour this in there, which is very pretty when it actually what, happens. What is there? Do you, do you have a bowl? Yes, I do. So here's the. Okay. This is the this is the bowl. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, yay. This is the four eggs and the heavy cream. And it kind of okay. sits and is a little bit of an art piece right there. Okay, so, very lovely. Yeah. Then a half uh, a single cup of milk. So hold on. Grab a little milk. Now, um, I have I have a thing about what milk I drink when I do bother to drink milk. Um, oh, not, yes. It's, it's not an ad egg. or anything. But the Horizon yep. Organic is who I like, and largely because yep. they have the DHA omega-3 in there and full vitamin D fortified. And currently, considering the respiratory illness that's going around, make sure you're getting your vitamin D, folks. That's all I'm saying. Even if, even if you find a vegan source to take the pill, I got vitamin D right in that cabinet right there. I'm just saying. We're all about the organic, organic, too. Right. So, we take that. We add this to our bowl. Ta-da. Like that. Voila. Hey. All right. Now, that is a... A uh, cup of milk, half a cup of heavy cream. Now, it's a cup and a half of whatever dairy you want. It has to be dairy. It can't be like silk or anything like that. I mean, we're making eggs, so I'm guessing it's not a vegan issue with most people. But you're gonna, it's you're gonna do it to taste. It's a cup and a half of that, four eggs. Okay. Okay. So uh, then we're going to whisk and mix. We're whisking and we're mixing and we're mixing or whisking. Now, I have one of these kind of normal whisks like we yep. have or whatever but i have to yep. say my favorite one is this weird starbucks 
and oh, you know, I love metal that enzymes. One. It's a frother. That's a yeah, frother. it's a frother, but it breaks up egg yolks and stirs stuff up a little bit better. And if stuff gets caught against the side of the bowl when you're doing powders and stuff, you can kind of mm -hmm. scrape away the sides, unlike these guys, which get gummed up, and it's easier to clean. Yes, so it is. If you oh, want to, dudes, guys who don't like to cook very much, <laughs> this is the go-to. Like, you know, that's. I'm just gonna say that's an integral part of it. So. Um, I'm going to break up these kind of things and start whisking and turning all this kind of thing while we're talking. And okay. while we're honestly, hanging out. monsters. You have no such. apron. Where's what? your apron? Oh, you have no apron. Excuse you. One second. <laughs> no, I have no apron. apron. Do I have no apron? <laughs> I knew there was an apron. This is the involved. first time oh, anybody's yeah. ever seen this. <laughs> No one, no one has ever seen this before. This is a, this oh, was a, awesome. this was a cast gift. It's a debut. I yeah. got one from um uh, when I did Breaking Bad. They gave me yeah uh, an apron. Well, yeah. <laughs> did, did it did it have a hazmat suit with it? <laughs> no, just just the yellow apron. <laughs> right. So, um, in this, we stir this all up, and then basically the rest of it is a matter of of taste. The They'll put in like a tablespoon of salt and blah, 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 blah. I tend to flavor to taste because I have a, yeah, that's a lot of salt. Yeah, it's a table, yeah, table. I've literally seen that. I'm like, that sounds nuts to me. So, I do a half a cup of salt. Yeah, exactly. A half a cup, no. A table, like a, a, it might be a teaspoon of salt. But they'll do kind of like this kind of amount of teaspoon of salt. Okay. Teaspoon, yeah. It's close. Yeah. yeah. So, but I tend to just give it a pass, stir it up, give it a pass, stir it up, give it a pass, stir it up, and that's oh, he does a swirl. Okay, huh? see, I'm not so crazy. That's a what swirl. I do. Yes. Measurement. So, <laughs> right. So I the, got um, for and, that. And last I also time. have this thing. So this is where most of my salt comes from. It's a grindery kind of thing. So it's kind of weird when you're cooking with this, but it works because by the okay. time you heat it up, it cooks it out. So. Um, or like that, and then I stir it a little bit, and then do it like three or four times, and that's about enough of salt for me. So I, my mom loves salty that's stuff, enough. Um, so she'll prefer it that way. But All I, right. on the other hand, uh, I'm, you know, I like stuff savory, but she's nuts with it. So like that, and then. So are you telling me you did you make this while you were prairieing? <laughs> no, I made this now based on the idea okay. that I'm going to start adding, you know, um, extra like dishes to the family's rot routine gotcha. while we're in quarantine to kind of charm this up. So, okay. and I'm going to sprinkle uh, the, the top with black pepper of the mixture and then stir that in. And usually that's enough. Then we start adding some cheese that gives some thickness and then you're going to pour it into the mold and and then it goes into the oven. Top, top the oven. Cheese quiche. There's nothing else. Not ham, Say that again? Broccoli, no, I can't hear her, so you got to translate. Okay, she's saying you're not putting anything else in there, just cheese? No, well, I no don't. Ham. Like, no, it's not a It's not a uh, quiche lorraine. You know, it's just that it's kind of base. If I want to, I can add other stuff, but this is a baseline. What I am going to add today that's different is avocado. Ooh. Oh, nice. So I'll put, yeah. So it'll cook kind of underneath it like an omelet. It'll just take longer or whatever. But I'll put a little bit of avocado in there with the cheese. And I can put in some Kalamata olives occasionally. That's also no, I... something that works. So again, mm -hmm. this is not traditional in any way. These are just the quiches I make. Whatever. This okay. is, I feel like so <laughs> naked in front of you guys. Because this is... These are house quiches. <laughs> yeah, these are mine. This is what I, you know. And because it's based on, like, what's worked as far as... Um, the, you know, the omelets I've made in the past and what the dishes savory wise work that way. So, um, today, like I've, I'm on the fence about whether or not I want to show you this other avocado thing I do while that's thrown in there while it's in the oven. So we'll see, but we'll see. It's a kitchen. It's a okay. kitchen. What's this recipe nonsense? So we're turning that in right there. Um, that, this is all is it out the most part. Is it <laughs> Someone's saying pinch this, pinch yes, that. Would. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, look. How are you doing? So, yeah. So, How are you doing? So that's a that's a mixture in there. We'll just, you know, just so it breaks up everything and mixes together. This is not one of those situations where you're going to run into. And 
This is the speed version too, as well. So <laughs> I got some pre-shredded cheese, but I, actually I got something special for this one. Hold on. Uh oh. Yeah. Well, the special <laughs> thing about avocados is you don't have to put them in. Right. Don't feel sad, Aaron. <laughs> Don't, don't feel sad, Aaron. You can. You don't have to add the avocado. No, you don't. Absolutely not. This is. These are just little elements or whatever. But um, I have some um, some crumbled uh, goat cheese that I was going to add to it. Um, oh, you know, nice. As um, the cheese this time, because sometimes I'll use the easiest one um, is the like like uh, the shredded Colby Jack or the shredded uh, Mexican cheese blend. You'll find it in the grocery store already made that way. So it's already shredded. It's already you know you can add that to omelets and eggs pretty easily, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But this, but goat cheese is a little tough because a lot of times it's gummy and it's, yeah. you can't cut it and all that stuff. But the crumbled kind, which they mean for like salads and stuff like that, is way easier to add to a mix like this. Yep. So you get the salad <laughs> yep. crumble goat cheese and it takes care of that part for you. Huh? Cool. Well, you I doing? will put in my, my, my daily Trader Joe's plug. They do a, a four cheese blend that's excellent. Yes. That's Wouldn't a, that the be same ball feta part. cheese, so, Debriana? Isn't he talking um, about feta? That's basically like like three quarters of a cup, oh, you know, of it. So it's fairly substantial, but I'll just stir that in so it kind of moves around. I don't need to whisk it any, really. Which is, okay, so are you sure that's goat cheese and not feta? Yes. Specifically, okay. it's not. Yeah, so okay, cool. there you go. I've, I've never Mon, seen Mon, it that. even says chèvre on there. Oh, look. Okay. How beautiful. Mm, Dorian, <laughs> ça va bien, oui, ça va. Je parle français comme un poche espagnol. So, um, hold on one second. I think that was quattro languages. How's big uh, I have several. Hold on one second. So, nothing. talk amongst yourselves real quick. <laughs> Well, like, okay, here, while, while, while y'all are talking amongst yourselves, I, I will add. I can't believe he lived on yes. the prairie. You'll add the what? <laughs> that you lived on a prairie. I'm scrolling your information across the bottom in case people need it while you have disappeared because we have no camera people. Understood. <laughs> yes, it's just part of the normal part of this, but I, I want to do something. Disappeared into thin in air, but that's a good Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Wow, smoked goat cheese. I know. I don't think I've ever had that, but I would enjoy that. What are they suggesting? Smoked goat cheese. Smoked goat cheese is a great idea. Also, yeah. uh, baked goat cheese in in pastry is fantastic. So yeah. <laughs> don't don't forget. He looks um, like he's yeah. only wearing. Yeah. So almost there. Three seconds away. One second. Give me a second. Okay. I'm sure he'll be back. I will. Don't worry. I'm just uh, taking my pants off. I'll be right there. Totally Nobody wears pants during Corona. We only wear shirts. That's right. That's right. That's why the apron. Um. So yeah. Thank We've God. been known to commit any sin with our aprons, That's both true. Lisa and I. I don't doubt it for a second. So. Gym shorts, underwear. Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody cares. It's just us. Um, we're, we're all learning to share in ways that we just didn't know possible. Okay, so hold on one second. We'll move this over here. Whoa! I am back. Hold on. I just wanted to push this against the side, and that, and the plate was hot, and I didn't have the necessary tools. And da 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 da. Now, I don't know that we'll, okay. we'll have time to actually, you know, bake the whole thing because of the time. But you pour that mixture into mm -hmm. into the crust pretty simple process just yeah. pour it right in now yeah. the tough part of a quiche is that it will start sometimes the top cooks and it will depending on your oven it will puff up and you have to kind of reach in there and pop it you know like so that it falls back down and it doesn't like just cook the top and stay Whoa. liquid underneath yeah and explode right yeah no so, raw eggs no raw eggs so it just takes some it, it just takes some like attention in that regard so you just want to set an alarm for yourself that l t reminds you to look at it. <laughs> it's the real yeah. thing. Because it's a process. It's like, it's about a half mm -hmm. hour or so, you know, 350. We're talking, okay. depending on your oven, depending on which shelf, depending on how new you are to the idea. It takes some maintenance. You just got to just pay attention. Yeah. That's the whole Feel point. your way through it. it. Right. Yeah. So this is on here. Now, um, what I will do even though I put the other uh, cheese in the thing, is that at one point I will open it up 
when it's starting to get hot. And I might sprinkle cheese across the top of it late in the game. Mm -hmm. Have it a little fresher melt that's on nice. top of it. That kind of thing. Yeah. So that's what the sh like the little bag of shredded would work for. Okay. But this one's got a fairly okay. decent amount. It's pretty solid. Again, four eggs, cup and a half of dairy, however you want to do it. Um, uh, about a three quarters of a cup of crumbled cheese, what have you. And then, like I said, sprinkled across the top. Salt and pepper. And that's it. It's on a, you know. It's on Gorgeous. A, yeah. Well, right. you think you just bake can it. Make it. Say again? More Anybody can make it. Yes. Yes. This is not that complicated. Like I said, make plan on making three of them. Just go, I'm going to make one. I'm going to test it. No, it's okay. What did I get wrong? What can I do better next time? You know? Okay. So we'll put this guy in here. Hold on. And whoa. Except the guy wearing the lab rat apron. Yes. Treat it like a science experiment, people. That's right. That's absolutely right. So hold that on one second. Eat. We yeah. that a lot. And you have to, you know, you have to be aware that it's the process, you know, of learning to cook, I I feel I'm curious what you think about this, and you you guys probably dealt with this more than anybody in talking to people and how they cook. But everybody thinks that heat is your friend and time is your enemy. If we just really? hotter is better and speed it up instead of you know what this takes a while. You know what I mean? That yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna forget about how long. I don't know how long to do it. I'm gonna do it the wrong amount of time. I'm not gonna do it long enough, or I'm gonna do it too long. It's gonna burn. It's not gonna be cooked. Time is the enemy. Whereas heat, if I just hotter is better, right? Hotter's got to be no. slightly better, and it isn't. Well, it depends on what you're doing. Totally. <laughs> so, yeah. like in this case, hold on. While well, I heated up the oven at 375 um, before for something else I was doing. I'm cooling it back down and we're going to have it at 350 for for this. It'll be a little longer, but the inside will be warmer over time. So there you go. So that's the beginning of that. Just tell Yay. them. Yay. Deborah, tell them it's about being present. It's like life. Now, I hear you. Yes. Yes. Oh, she's, what'd she say? She said it's about being present. It's just like life. Well, I would agree. I would often think that, what were we talking about? <laughs> I don't remember. Anyways, I don't know. something. He, he I said, in the uh, kitchen. There was this, you know what, my mom once said, where are we? And I was like, you know, there's so much to learn from a, what, that, it went, oh, I left that on. I don't know what's going on. Um, so, yeah, agreed. That's the whole point of cooking they, your they own food. They can hear you on YouTube, Lisa. They, they, Hal can't hear you, but the people on YouTube can hear you. They yeah. respect you and hear you. I wish I could hear you. I don't know what that's about. It's very curious, but it's there. Yeah, so. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure. Do I have a sensor on? Is it because you're swearing so much? What could be the possible reason? Are you too high pitched? Is it a dog whistle kind of a thing? Well, know. you know, you could hear her before and then all of a sudden you couldn't. I don't no. know what happened. No, I could only hear you the whole time that I'm aware of. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we probably Who worked did? that out. Oh, no. Oh, well. I didn't know that. You didn't know that. Who knew that? So there's a couple of things while this is baked because this is going to take time. So we're going to yes. check on this. Hey, Siri, set an alarm for 15 minutes. So. Well, that's a way my, of doing it. My Apple Watch is a cook's best friend. Because wow. everything I'm cooking, I set a little alarm, and it will remind me, and then I go and check. It, and it does a taptic thing. It tap, it like, da, 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 on your wrist, like, hey, go check your thing. So if you're doing... <laughs> If you're like making a steak or whatever, and sometimes you'll like, like one of the ways you can make a steak, of course, is put it in the oven at 200 degrees for about, you know, half an hour or something like that. Let it warm up to that point and then sear it, you know. Yeah. Um, I would forget about it and it would just look like a dog turd by the time. You're just going to shrink <laughs> down. So this helps. I'm just saying it's better. Yeah. No, a timer is your best friend in the kitchen, however you use it. I We use timers all the time. Yeah. So... Um, so two other things, this will be the other thing that we work with. One is, I think the avocado thing, I just want to do this way. So, um, okay. over here on, on the table, we have, uh, the honey is still over here because Summer was making tea for herself. Um, the, as, uh, as a reformed, as a reformed vegan, as a former vegan and, and somebody who's eats plant-based probably 20% of the time, per, like solidly, and then 80% of the time it's a mix. Um, mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the ways, 
one of the issues is always getting enough fat in your diet, good fat, right? Mm -hmm. And I love uh, avocado in general. But yep, me too. My the two main avocado delivery systems, maybe three. Well, obviously guacamole, I guess, qualifies as one. But as far as whole avocado uh, in my life was on a salad somehow, and then in a mm -hmm. grilled cheese sandwich. So a grilled okay. cheese with sliced avocado in it. My old roommate Matt used to make those, and I thought it was the most disgusting thing I'd ever seen in my life. Why would you make something lovely like a grilled cheese turn green? Are you insane? And then I had one, and I can't actually have a grilled cheese without avocado on it anymore because it's ah, awesome. Well, there you go. My husband had one this afternoon. <laughs> yes. Now, technically speaking, it's no longer a grilled cheese. It's an avocado uh, sandwich with cheese because <laughs> cheese is an, account an accompaniment. Um, once you're grilling something else involved, the cheese is an additive. I don't care what anybody says. you know. So, anyways, <laughs> in this, one of the main dishes I make all the time – that I came up with on my own was to make sure that I had enough fat in my diet uh, in a proper sense. Okay. Was we get a spoon? Somebody wants was to eat it. One whole knife. avocado, <laughs> and you just take a knife and you just cube it, cut it across, left right. or up and down like this. Mm -hmm. So you take this knife, which is one of my favorite knives, and any time and and you just kind of lightly. You don't have to cut the skin at all. You barely, you know, because if it's ripe enough. You shouldn't have to do it too hard. And then you just cut right. it kind of so that it's basically cubed across, right? Then yep. take a spoon and just spoon it out into a bowl like that. The cubes into a bowl. And out come the cubes. Yes. It's so easy. It's beautiful. It's, it's amazing. Just, it's gorgeous. Look at that. Just kind of, they just come right, right out. It's nice. Fantastic. And Deborah, don't forget to translate uh, what she's telling you. She's saying stuff. Yes. <laughs> I can see her mouth moving. And I'm Black interested. Black yeah. Black so, so, yeah. So, you're going to cube this out. It's just one whole avocado like this. Okay? That's what you're doing. Yes. Right. Then. Well, one of the things we always say with that Lisa just reminded me of is fat carries the flavor. Yes. Speaking of flavor, this is partly where it comes from. Balsamic vinegar. So, yeah. take this. A, a splash of the balsamic vinegar, just a little, just coat it a little bit, not too much because it'll gather in the bottom and you can turn it under there. So lay back a little bit, little Newman zone, you know, do a little charity work while you're at it. And then our, our friend salt and pepper, a little bit of salt like that. Here we go. A little bit of uh, pepper to, you know, if you choose, a check it, check it, check it like that. And then with your spoon, just turn this, just... Rotate it so that the balsamic vinegar that's fallen down on the bottom has just covered that. And that essentially okay. is the entirety of the thing. This is one of the most substantial, like, just diet meals you can have in a lot of ways. Because if you're trying to keep your, you know, your calories down but get good mm -hmm. fats in your system and you don't want to consume a lot, eating this whole thing like this will mm -hmm. fill you up. It'll be ultimately substantial. Um, oh, oh, and it's delicious. It's amazing. Avocados yeah. are like the most miracle food on planet Earth. Tell him. Mm -hmm. She said they're, they're a miracle food. Yeah. Avocado. Amazing. So, yeah. And basically, some days when I was uh, just getting into intermittent fasting, and I was like, I'm starving because my eating window hasn't come up yet, I would have a smaller meal before my big meal of just this. And you're full. Mm. You're full for another yeah. three hours because your body's messing yeah. around with this. I find eggs do that too, though. Yeah. I, eggs definitely fill me up, and they last a long time. But for our our vegetarian and vegan friends who are you know rotating okay. their animal proteins in and out, this is a great go to that's a fill you up as well. And so I would basically just consume this whole thing <laughs> while I'm here. So. I thought we were going to put that in quiche. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, but you're not putting that in the quiche. No, I'm not. I'm just eating it. That's why I was because okay. I looked at it. It was such a good avocado. I was like, I don't want to cook it. It's so good. So I like. I'm just gonna eat it. Why not? <laughs> well, while we're here, we're just gonna eat it. Yeah. So here's here's the other thing. I'm just gonna eat while we're all here. Um, for the for the heck of it. Eating for um, us on the show. How much? Well, I eat one meal a day. I only eat once a day. Oh. 
Oh. So my dinner, my one meal, is usually enormous. <laughs> now, what? Why do you do that? For the mainly for the benefits of fasting. Fasting for twenty hours okay. or more is fantastic for your system. It uh, helps with your. Um, it keeps your insulin response low. Um, there are all kinds of ancillary benefits to to fasting, but the window of fasting, a minimum of 12 to 14 hours a day is good for you in general. That, that's when they start kicking in. At 16 hours, you really start to see the kind of anti-aging benefits and all those kind of stuff that science has talked about. And so at 20, most days, five days a week, I do OMAD, one meal a day. And then on the weekends, I have regular intermittent fasting window, which is eight hours. So all my eating happens in two eight-hour windows on Saturday and Sunday. Wow. So mm -hmm. I fit it all in there. And there's, I mean, there's tons of science around. I mean, I'm, I'll be 51 next month. Yay! Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And I don't, I don't take any testosterone supplements or any of that kind of stuff. Like, I, don't, I haven't had to do that, which is great. And I, I attribute a lot of how I feel health-wise, which is very good these days, to the fact that I've been doing intermittent fasting for about six years now. And I've been doing OMAD wow. for about two or maybe a year wow. and a half solid. So, wow. Yeah. That's a long time. And so it's just your lifestyle to do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a thing um, that um, like my girlfriend, you know, she, everybody else in the house has a regular eating window. They just do. Right. But I, as weird as I am. Uh, I. Yeah. But I, however, <laughs> um, here I'll, um, not necessarily. So let me rotate. Do you that. drink? Do you have a certain amount of things that you drink? like? Do you drink a lot of water in the day or? Um, yeah. No, uh, yes. Don't. I drink, I drink water, um, with, uh, great regularity, but I also, um, like I have black coffee in the morning. I usually iced coffee. I don't, not necessarily hot. Um, mm -hmm. and I will do, um, like I make sure I get enough water. A lot of times I'll supplement it with BCAAs, but only during my window. So I used to be a little more fast and loose with like branch chain amino acids to help maintain mus muscle mass. There's some yeah. thought that you can have those and not mess with your eating window and fasting. I don't buy it. I think you have to be pretty much abstinent from anything that gives you calories or even stuff that has a sweet flavor because your body will react, especially early on, with an insulin response because it's expecting sugar even if there is none. Oh, so you drink a sweet, okay. like a diet drink. Most people, once they shift to OMAD and your body's used to it, if you have that, your body doesn't, I, my theory is your body doesn't expect the sugar during that time. So even though it's got a sweet taste, it won't kick in. But if you're trying it for the first time, it's best to be a bit of a purist in that regard. Okay, so what, what, what are you doing? So <laughs> this is... Uh, when you only eat one meal a day. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God, he's like Rocky Balboa. <laughs> she said you're Rocky Balboa. Mm -hmm. Holy How many, God. How many eggs? Oh my God. How many eggs did you just eat? That was four. I usually do six. Wow. But we use some of them for the quiche, so. Okay. But I'll do, <laughs> yeah, I'll usually do six. Um, as an addition to my meal, if I don't do a protein shake of some sort, or I'll oh, add. Now, why don't you want them to taste good? Huh? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think? Why, they don't... why don't you? Why do you just have them raw? Like, is there a reason? Because they don't taste that good, do they? Sure, they're fine. It's um, oh, okay. they they have less of a flavor than people assume. For one, most people assume there's a sulfuric kind of smell or taste to them because they're raw. There's this idea. If they're rotten or they smell that way, you shouldn't be eating them. They're, uh, you know, especially Correct. raw. If they're fresh eggs, they won't have much of a smell, if at all. If they do have any, don't have them, you know. Um, so I, uh, you know, I did a lot of, like, studying about the, the, like, the value of eggs in the diet and that kind of stuff after a while. And the, and the idea of eating organ meats and the entirety of the animal. If you're going to eat one piece of it, eat the rest of it. Don't waste it, you know, and if you can incorporate that in your diet, it's, there's a reason why it's better for you. So in terms of eggs, eggs, oysters, um, fish eggs, those kind of things have the entirety of the animal kind of in the, in that. And so separating out part of it 
you don't get all the benefits. I know this is weirding everybody out, but th this is just the truth. So, well, so there are people saying all kinds of things like that. They think your sperm count is off the charts. <laughs> Oh, you might want I to refuse know to answer on the grounds that it may incriminate me, but um, <laughs> but yeah. So um, the the consumption so of viral. like I read at one point, the, you know what started the egg thing was I read about this weightlifter uh, diet back in the in the early days before they had steroids and all that kind of stuff. There was this like twenty four egg a day diet this guy was doing. I know it's insane. Like I can't imagine. And he would yeah. eat 24 cooked eggs a day for like, and that's it. That's all the food for like three weeks. No vegetables? No. And wait, and the benefits of it once the scientists looked at his blood stream was that it was the same as doing, in a positive sense, a course of steroids. That ultimately the effect it had on the body was he built so much muscle and retained so little fat and it, it boosted you know, testosterone, it boosted all kinds of mm -hmm. elements of uh, just blood stability that were, you know, and there's a reason why they did it. It's just most people don't do it because it's easier to take a shot and what's grosser than living on eggs for three weeks alone. Ugh. But there were also these old, like, um, frontier doctors and the like who are, yeah, right, frontier doctors <laughs> who were on like, the prairie. Yeah, right, on the prairie, on the absolutely. <laughs> That's right, in the teepee. <laughs> that uh, that that said basically like a course of eggs over time would benefit you health wise um, wow. if you were if you had a serious illness and they would and it was usually raw eggs and they were fresh from oh. the farm at that point so the chance of salmonella right. and all that kind of stuff was right. less there's definitely um, the factor that I the only safety mechanism I really do besides washing the shells of the eggs most of the time is I crack them on a different surface. Do not crack the eggs on the glass you're having them from. Crack them on something else oh. because it's the shell that has the salmonella on it. So if, if that's an issue. So that's one of the things I learned. I've never had an issue, even an upset stomach from one, since I've done raw eggs. And that's okay. how I do it. Do you crack them every day? No, I have them about every other day. About every, uh, okay. yeah, month, like, not a Monday, Wednesday, Friday thing. I cycle everything mostly out of laziness. This is like, kind of, I don't think I want to boost my testosterone either. Right. <laughs> What's Brianna, this what? is House Park's True Confessions. Yes, this is House Park's True Confessions. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, I, I don't have any other kinds of confessions. This is just true. <laughs> Nobody's bothered to ask me. It's not like I have secrets about it. It's just nobody gave a shit until now. All right, so, yeah, so that's, so... In on it, people. <laughs> and partly, Summer, my girlfriend, is a huge Rocky fan. We both love Rocky. See? And so at one point, yeah, I thought, well, she'll <laughs> love this. I'll eat a bunch of raw eggs right in front of her, and it'll be impressive. She'll be like, let's see. You're like, wow. really hanging, hanging on the, on the door frame, was you know? Impressive. Was it impressive? What are you saying? Was she impressed? Was she surprised? She was disgusted. She can't even look at me when I do it. I was, I was so disappointed. I was thought I was impressing her, and I was like, "She's gonna love this. She loves Rocky. She loves it." And uh, you know, he just downs him, right? Oh, there's my, yeah. there's Siri telling me to take a look at my key. She give it oh, let let's see. Hang oh, that's out with that's house looking pretty good. In his that's kitchen, pretty solid. Now, I want to see. Hold on. Let's take a peek, shall we? Hold on one second. Let me. Yes, this is live on Facebook. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we're not, we don't, <laughs> this is, we're live. We're live ish. Hold on. Let's see if we can get this. Uh, uh, that looks, that looks like a quiche, right? Does that look like a quiche? Oh, yeah, it looks that good. I'm kidding. This is a peach pie I'm making at the same time. <laughs> that looks the, lovely. Yeah, I'm just making a peach pie because I was making crust anyways, so why not make a peach pie? So it's still. It's still cooking. It's still got a little time, but it looks really good. So, oh, nice! He likes yeah. to do so things. You can't move the quiche around because um, while it's solidifying, oh. hold on. That's I'll show hard. you guys what it looks like. One second here. I'm gonna have to okay. unplug you and move you in. So we'll move in. Comedian. Hi, oh, my hi, neighbor. When so the there kitchen is. There. See the quiche right the there. Look with that. The quiche is nice. nice. It's nice and flat and nice and creamy looking, and it's even oh, and it's starting to bake. Nice. And it's just gonna take its time. You know, we just let it. Let it go, but it's not it's not overheating. So hey that Siri, hey Siri, set an alarm for ten minutes. 
So that's right. So, so we can have a, a a picture of your peach pie when you're done too. I beg your pardon. Excuse me. I'm a lady. <laughs> we want right. a picture of your peach. I'm what? <laughs> we don't ask that of everyone. <laughs> oh, up there. Okay. Huh? Oh, the the. Oh yeah, we have very sensitive smoke alarms in here. So it's like, oh. you just open the oven, like the little things that have been on the bottom or whatever, or the heat from it sets it off. So yeah, we have ours attached to the smoke alarm. To the smoke alarm is attached to calling the fire department. Yikes! Yeah, and they're not far from here. No, well, they now know the route, don't they? We've had oh, it's just bacon. Don't worry. Right. I don't know. We're, We're doing good. It's, it's you know, it's a nice on our show. <laughs> What's that? What she say? Humans, when they get on our show, like to just they love to cook and they don't want to stop it. You know what I mean? Like Mike. You have to you have to translate, on, Deborah. Adriana. So. Pe people love cooking on our show and they don't want to stop. Yeah. <laughs> especially comedians. Com yeah. Especially comedians. <laughs> well, it's we like they, com they, comedians have chips on our shoulder that we fit that. Our, ours is the only job in entertainment that's a matter of opinion. Mm -hmm. That you know, well, if you're an actor, you're an actor, and you act, and you can be a bad actor, but you're still an actor. Right. You know, you can be a singers. You sing. You might be a crappy singer, but you're definitely singing. No one can argue that that's you're at least your William Hung is attempting to sing. He's a singer. It might not be good. <laughs> guitar players play guitar, but a comedian. And if you're not funny, you're not you're you're not a comedian. You're just a guy talking. Or a woman talking. You're just, you know what I mean? Until the jokes come, right, yeah. There's an argument that you don't even have the job while you have it. So, it, you know, we're always, I think we all have a chip on our shoulder to be, you know, that we want to be respected. Um, not me. <laughs> um, but that's because I have, well, I mean, I have other talents, clearly. I mean, you're thank a you. Chef. You're a chef. So, yeah. 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 Yes, now you're a chef and we all know it. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, so now and then we the nice thing about cooking for real is that we just hang out while it's going on. Yeah. Well, this is our show. We hang out in the kitchen. Right. And and watch how Hallie and avocados and eggs. <laughs> oh my god. Raw eggs and and raw avocado with just I hope some vinegar on it. Viral. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> so yeah. Oh my god. Let's start a hashtag. How but yeah, this is my this was the cast <laughs> cast and crew gift. Twenty oh nice for lab rats for twenty twelve. Sweet. <laughs> when my nice. when Thanks. my son was a year old, my son is the same age as lab rats. He Aww. was. He oh, really? was, he was, I remember when you, were, you guys were pregnant. Yeah. So. Because uh, from Stephanie Miller, I think weren't you on that? No, she's not the mother, but I know that that's a common <laughs> thought. Um, no, I don't mean she's the mother. She would never be the mother. Oh my god. <laughs> well, she. I mean, uh, but I think I remember hearing it on the show. Uh, yes, I think it, I think she knew like you know a year after the fact or something like that. But but yeah, so <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's just it's it's one of those things. It's a milestone, kind of a kind of a uh, an heirloom. We mark, we mark things. Yes, we mark things as actors and. Yeah. Comedians. Yeah. And chef. So I, yeah, I'm so disappointed. I can't hear her at, with you, Debriana. I know it's it's so it's so terrible. So this is just bizarre. Yeah. Well, very strange. I don't on. know. Let me see if happening. is there. Okay, I can see this. I can't be um, can <laughs> she read this? Uh, is she? Are you typing? Are you yes. Typing it? Okay. Um, I don't know. That allows me to go to the web. I have to write a message. This is I don't want to do that. Oh, I see. <laughs> so what does that allow me to do? I'm pushing all the buttons on here or whatever. Is there filters? Do I get to can I have some sort of is there something filthy I can make? That, that turns my kitchen around. That's the that's that's the fridge. You don't need to see the fridge. None of this is helping. It keeps flashing that I'm live just in case I don't know. <laughs> And oh, I can type a message, but I can't read the messages. Can he read this? I know we can get the job, but can he Are do there? the job? All right. Um, I can see people talking. I don't. I'm. I don't know why you can't. I. I don't either. Although I. I just I, wrote I, him. I just wrote him. Being the uh, crazy <laughs> computer nutcase I am, it wouldn't be that difficult for me to open up your page. 
go to the live thing. Oh, look at him go. And see if it's happening. I just wrote him. There you go. I just hear myself reading back. So at least I can see the chat room. Bless your hearts. Hi, everybody. And then I can hear, I can hear her secondarily. Oh, no. no. I just, then I just pause and play. Oh, my God. See? <laughs> That works. That works. That works. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Someone's saying raw eggs in a whole avocado. Damn, I wasted 40 grand in culinary school. <laughs> yeah, but I'm telling you, like, if you want to keep your cuts, this is one of the ways to do it. I'm just saying. Do you work out? Do you work out? That's beef body. <laughs> Ask hashtag Al sperm count. I'm not sure he liked that hashtag. I don't know. Do you care about that one? I don't care about anything. Right. Yeah, it's coronavirus. Like, do you realize the world is in total turmoil? It, it, I, it, these are like the folks that I, I'm amazed that trolls still think they have any standing in the world. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, really? Yeah. You do realize there's like 156,000 people have lost their lives. Their families affected by this all over the place. The economy's less 30 like, percent of its GDP overall. Biggest dip since the Great Depression. Like and, and you think you can insult my career choice and make me upset? You're kidding me, right? Like, really, child? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. No. That's, I mean, that's, 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 that's it with being 51. Yes. You're like, yeah. Wow. No. None of it. Yeah. None of it works. So. Here, hold on. Will, yeah. yeah. Oh, Lisa and Deb both look cut. Yes, we're cut. <laughs> Beach body. That's right. <laughs> you do my. I should do a Tony Horton sketch or whatever for the next sexy liberal yeah. show. No, you know, you you know, you have to go go to who's the guy? The Beast. The Beast. Watch the Beast. Yeah. he's funny. Oh, Beast body. Yeah, yeah I, 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 because I, he's I've done. I've done everything, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the very least, I've done like P90X, wow. I've done Insanity, yep. I've done I did dozens of kinds of dietary things. I, you know, I've not done keto per se, but no, I don't. Do keto. That always seemed weird to me, but it's not. It's, I'm mean, sure it works for some people. You know, um, I have a uh, I have a guy uh, um, who does keto stuff who uh, follows my stream. This guy Gonzo and. And for if people doing that, I'm sure it works for them, and I think it's fantastic. It's just something I haven't done yet or haven't tried. I wouldn't rule it out. But doing OMAD, it's really hard. Like, I just have to crowbar everything into one meal. Um, but it, but it's, so when do you work out? Like, on an empty stomach? Yes. I work out okay. fasted. Yeah. Uh, it's better. Than, I, I, to do that I, ran a lot. I never, I never ate before I ran it. Everyone was always saying, eat something before you run. And I'm like, I well, can't, I just, yeah, know. but running's different. Running creates a need for carbohydrates. That's why it depends on what kind of running you're doing. If you're doing sprints, it's different. If you're doing long distance no, jogging distance. or running, I'm then, you know, it's a carbohydrate heavy activity because you're, you're storing up for a long activity. It's a different thing altogether. I don't do that. One of the, one of my favorite workouts at home right now is the Creed boxing game on my PlayStation VR. I'm not kidding. Wow. I am a sweaty mess when I finish that. It's because it's it's shadow boxing and it's a game and you forget after a while because you're just standing there just <sighs> in the middle of your living room. And then by the end of it, you're like, why am I so sore the next morning? All I was doing was playing a game, you know. You don't want to know what I do for my work. I drink a bunch of eggs and then I'm like. Right. All the nineteen sixty-two so, yeah. Schwinn stationary bike. Okay. She has a nineteen sixty-two Schwinn stationary bike. Oh no. <laughs> no. Talk about lowering your sperm count. Yeah. That's for ladies. I, that's what I need I to bounce my prostate off a stationary bike for a year and a half at my age. That's a great idea. If it, if it doesn't swell naturally, we can cause it artificially through damage. That's great. Why don't I just punch myself in the taint a hundred times a day? What a, why don't I just go there? That that oh, could be something. Second time to check. Let's check on this guy. Okay, oh, here it is. Start to pop up a little bit. Usually so this is, so this is the thing with, here, with quiches. Let me show this. Hold on. Let me quick. Calm down, Siri. I'm I'm checking. Hold on. So this is one of those things where grab a little fork. Right here. Okay. And as you check in on this okay. regularly, and by the way, the pie is 
basically done at this point. But see this thing? I'm just going to pop little holes in that. Holes in his quiche. Yeah. To make sure that it stays. Because you want it basically, it's starting to get firm around this end. It has to be yeah. firm, but slightly jiggly in the center, which is, you know, <laughs> um, there's a, I'm sure there's a, I like my women like I like my quiche joke, but in there somewhere, but. The, uh, that slightly jiggly is. Jiggly. Yeah. <laughs> so ever so slightly jiggly is a great way to, you know, judge your quiche. Anyway, right here's this, the peach pie. Well, you know, peach pie is looking pretty it's solid. I mean, that's looking good. That's looking pretty good. Oh, good. We're, we're good. just gonna set that guy down, let it cool, because that's plenty. Well, are you gonna eat that tonight? Like, stuff it all in. Hmm. Are you gonna eat the peach pie tonight? Well, I'll make this for the family. I won't. I'll eat the peach pie tomorrow. Probably, I can eat like half of it with my meal if I want. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and I weigh, I weigh 165 pounds, fully clothed, soaking wet. Um, okay. I'm five, nine. Wow. That's a good range. Huh? Yeah. That, that's a true confession. It's right here, out here in the open. No, that's a good number. It's a good, for me, I, I always had a hard time gaining physical weight. Like putting on muscle mass was always really hard for me. So it's partly why I sought out so many odd you know, yeah. additions to my diet, you know, to try and make, like, figure out. I did have a, a girlfriend in the 90s that I dated, uh, Kim, who I owe for being able to finally uh, crest over 130 pounds because I was I was bouncing at the bottom of 127 pounds all the time, and I couldn't, I could never get over, you know, if I ate four pounds of food, I'd still weigh less than 30, 130 pounds. I don't know how that worked. Kim, if you're out there, closure from house park. <laughs> You what? <laughs> Pass that on. She said, Kim, Kim, if you're out there, that's closure from Hal Sparks. It totally is. Yeah. No, she, we have closure. We're good. So, but she, um, but she, you know, I was doing like shakes all the time to try and like bulk up. You know, I was like, I need to put on some muscle and I just can't. Like I'm just skinny. And, and she goes, eat some food. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, eat some actual food. Like, because I would eat, I would graze, and then my meal, I would try to augment it because I wouldn't eat that much with a shake or something like that. But the sugar in it, oftentimes, would, my metabolism would just kick in, burn the sugar, shred everything else, and I wouldn't absorb any of the nutrients. So, mm -hmm. so eventually, she was like, eat some fucking food. And, um, <laughs> And so ultimately that, you know, that was the turn. And I started like, you know, cooking more. She was a, she was, and the funny thing was she's a pastry chef. Um, so she made desserts nice. all the time. Um, Eat some. Yeah. <laughs> Eat something. But she, but that wasn't the kind of weight I was trying to put on. I was trying to, you know, and, <laughs> and if you want to stop eating sugar, date a pastry chef. Cause they will like, they'll make so much stuff that the smell of it after a while, you're like, ugh, you know. And even they are, they'll like bite something for the chewiness of it. They're like wine tasters, you know, never finish a glass of wine in their lives. You know, just like, I never, I bake all the time. I never eat it. Yeah. It's like, you're like Mr. Frost. Um, there's a, uh, for those of you who don't know, one of my favorite Jeff Goldblum films of all time is a movie yeah. called Mr. Frost, where he plays a serial killer and who may also oh, be I'm Satan. And, uh, Kathy Baker is in it. She's his shrink. It's fabulous. And, uh, he doesn't eat because he's not human. So he, when the cops, when the detective shows up, he's making a baked Alaska and he, he, he show, and it's perfect. And he's like, would you like some? And he's like, it's a little early in the day for me. And he goes, and then he takes a picture of it with a Polaroid camera. And, uh, Remember Polaroid? yeah, that's how old the movie is. And he scrapes <laughs> it up into the trash. And then he takes the Polaroid and puts it on a wall with a, with dozens of other pictures of food. And it's just oh, this creepy. weird little character affectation. That's creepy. One of the best lines ever where um, he, they, the cop comes to see him and he finds him in the yard. They go in, they're sitting down having, he goes, good uh, coffee and uh, conversation. And the, the, the detective goes, we got... We arrested two car thieves, and they said they tried to steal your Aston Martin, and they um, they decided against it. And he goes, uh, didn't uh, like the uh, model? Or? And he goes, 
No, they said they found a body in it. And he goes, <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, the body, yeah. You know, I was just finishing burying it when you walked up. And, uh, and the detective goes, oh, that's exactly the answer I expected, you know, kind of laughing off. And he goes, what, do you think I'm joking? And it's such <laughs> a great, and then all of a sudden the cop, who's been kind of like, okay, this is probably these kids are bullshitting me. I've got to talk to this guy. Just realizes, oh, shit, I'm way out in the middle of the woods in this guy's farm with a guy who was just burying a dead body. And I'm a British cop. I don't even have a gun. <laughs> like, it's like, uh, Bummer, dude. <laughs> well, if that's the case, then I'll be back uh, tomorrow with a warrant. And he goes, that would seem to be the proper thing. <laughs> and he just like, gets up. And it's like, uh, it's, it's so good. It's such a good, good omen -y kind of movie, you know? So, yeah. Well, I, I now have it on my list. Thank you. It's beautiful. It, you can't find it anywhere. You have to watch it on YouTube. Somebody posted it on YouTube. Okay. Oh, really? That's where I've watched it. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Good to know. Yeah. Um, and I just, I adore that movie. I, I, I mean, I've watched it dozens of times. I mean, I like Goldblum's um, affectations. I think all of us have loved him since Jurassic yeah. Park. And my kid loves Jurassic Park so much and loved dinosaurs and all that as young mm -hmm. boys who are rhinoceri like he is uh, often do. And um, the I used to, you know, delight him by going, ah, ah, I'll, t I'll tell you what the problem uh, with your little experiment here. It didn't take any uh, discipline to attain it. You saw what other people did, and uh, you, you know, when you package it, now you sell it. Now you want to sell it, that whole bit. You know, the camera can would just fall apart, you know, the Jeff Goldblum. So that, ah. Uh, nice. Awesome. Someone's making, oh, I want to make pierogi. Who said that? Ooh, pierogi. Connie. Pierogi. I love it. Pierogi. Mm -hmm. I just thought pierogi we sounded have... like a gangster's name. Um, we have not made pierogi. Oh, Richard's yet. in there. Put your own assemble. And them. Cosmic Rose is in there. And okay, now I can see the chat. Connie, yeah, put and our all channel. these fun people. Yeah. Kelly Bon Vivant, Sava Bien, and Cancer Lion, and Kylie. Look at this. Look at this good Jim. How are you? And Joe. This is a big, Actually funny. lovely group of people in here. <laughs> yeah. Following me about. So, um, yeah. This is starting. If anybody wants to buy us a cup of coffee, yeah. you can over at coffee.com. Oh, is that? Do you, you do coffee.com? We do. Yeah, I do the the Patreon thing. Finally, talked Steph into doing it. You know how long it took me to talk Stephanie Miller into doing Patreon, and now it's one of their. I key... was wondering why it took her so long. Uh, I don't either, because I was the one pushing her in that direction. One of the reasons I got on Patreon and why I started trying to develop it beyond the fact that it's nice that my show can pay for itself and not, and so I don't have to argue with my agent that I'm wasting my time. So he recognizes yeah. that it's in and of itself, it's its own thing. So I don't have to mm -hmm. have that argument with him. And it's, you know, and if you're doing effort, getting paid for it is not wrong. And if people want to support it, awesome. Right. That's good. Exactly. But also, like, it was hard for me to go tell her or others that could use it and didn't have another outlet or needed it that it worked yeah. if I hadn't started doing it. So I doubled it's down on my it. effort yeah. so that I could go to yeah. my artist friends who have a hard time and go, look. I had a hard time with the idea of selling the show and doing that stuff because I would do it for free too. You feel bad as an yeah. artist a lot of time trying to convince yeah. people to help you out or reach out. And so I feel like yeah. until I had done it and until I reach a level of success with it, it's hard for me to argue you should try it, right? But I reached right, a point, right. you know, I had six patrons last year and now I have 326 or so. Um, and these oh, are people, pretty, pretty. you know, and then, you know, and when I do, you know, when I was doing live shows, they all get to come to my live shows for free and bring a guest. By the time they've done it, yeah. I've shown up once in their town. It pays for oftentimes that they've been a patron for months, if not years. Yeah. It works itself out. It's actually a good deal long term, but it also can benefit, right. the, you know, I've grown my show. I've been able to buy equipment, all these things. And Steph has this huge infrastructure of stuff that yeah. I don't have. That's expensive, you know, and employees, and, and it's a tough thing to. She's in her basement, and it's a show, and it's a whole, you yeah, know, setup down. Exactly. Yeah. So I, you know, yeah. but I couldn't talk her into it when I had six patrons because how do you, you know, how do you go? You give it a try. It's a lot of effort, but yeah. I have six people buying me coffee once a week, right? 
and bless those people's hearts. They were, I mean, they've been with me since the beginning and I love them for that. And they get special gifts because of it. But the, but it is, there is a, I'm learning for me as an artist, one of the reasons why I want success in what I do, why I, what drives me to be a success is the inspirational part for other people. Because I, I come from a one road town in Peaks Mill. I didn't go to Hollywood High like all the cast of Friends did. I didn't grow mm-hmm. up around anybody. That, I didn't have anybody in the industry. As a matter of fact, most of the people in my life were like, I don't know what you're doing that for. So if I can do it, <laughs> you know, and weather the 90s, which I call the Sisyphus years, you know, uh, just p- every day rolling the rock up the hill and watch it roll back down. And just my whole family thought I, I, I probably would find a better career as a heroin user and so like they were all worried about me all the time. But if I can make it through that 10 year slash 11 year window doing stand up when I was 15 to not breaking until I was 30, I turned, you know, I turned 30 three months after I got talk soup and I, and I did that for a year and then did queer as folk. And so my career was really launched in 99, 2000 after I'd been at it since 1985. I've been professional. You were an overnight success. Huh? <laughs> You were an overnight success. Yeah, a 15-year overnight success, right. But if I can, in any of these situations, that's why it's partly why I do music, not just because I love it and not just because, but all the people I encounter are like, I'd love to do that, but I can't. And so it drives me to be a success at it because if I fail at it to some degree, it puts one more rock on the scale in their life of, yeah, that's hard. So Mm -hmm. it's a these are all driving forces to me, like, if I want to convince one of my stand-up friends that they can have a career on YouTube where they might not be ready to tour yet or that their podcast won't take off or blah, blah, blah. When they t- yeah. I hear all that from everybody. That if I can do yeah, it, yeah. I can go, look, it's possible, okay? I haven't even, yeah. you know, I'm not going all in and I've reached a level of success with it. If you go all in, you could double or triple what I've done and what I've done is substantial. So, and my career arc is, you know, my arc is I want to be the fame mark that I want to peak at the Zenith is when I'm 80 years old. Cause my goal is to be, you know, for Abe, for Abe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, yeah. Right. My goal is to be a uh, Burgess Meredith or Hume Cronin. You know, <laughs> honestly, that's, those are my, or Alan Arkin. Um, people who you really think of as old you know, yeah. in their career, you know, or Anthony Hopkins, even in the dramatic sense that the, the, mm-hmm. the, the the height of what they delivered was because of a life of experience that they bring to their work. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. And and so I, I don't, I'm not impatient. (laughs) So I get to be patient with the uncomfortable parts so I can give that to other people. Right. I can, I can check and make sure this is starting to look good. Check is cheap. Oh, I checked. It's looking good. It's looking good. It's going to have to bake on top. Things. What's she saying? Tell me again. Say, translate. Say, say it. Say it again. This is turning out to be a philosophical life lesson thing with Hal Sparks. It's so great. Yeah, this is turning out to be a philosophical life lesson with Hal Sparks. Thank this you. is awesome. This is how, uh, yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is why cooking matters. It's why. That's right. It's what you know. What you do with almost everything in your life, even the failures of them is reflective of where you are. And if you pay attention to them, that's how you can get better at those things. And if you can, my, I think if I have one superpower, like everybody talks about what's your one thing that may get you ahead more than anything else is that I've never been afraid to be a white belt. (laughs) That in, you know, I've, I've, I've got three black belts. And, and that I've studied mm-hmm. in my life and another martial art that I studied for 20 years plus that has no belts, but I've never been ashamed to start from scratch. Yeah. That I think yep. a lot of people view that as something to be ashamed of that if you have to mm-hmm. start over, it's a reflection of failure as opposed to you're taking on a new challenge or a new thing. Right. And if you suck at it for a while, it's because you don't have some sort of innate talent for it. And that's not how anything worthwhile works at all. No one, there are no innately talented virtuoso piano players. There are only ones that practice their ass off to an insane level. Oh, that's, that's right. it. That's right. 
that there is yep. there's no magic and it's and it is actually insulting to people with a lot of talent especially in the music world where it requires a lot of practice to go oh my god they're just so talented they must have been born with it or whatever and then you find out well at eight years yeah. old they started taking lessons because their parents are concert pianists they had no television they didn't do anything else and they played piano for six years straight doing nothing else well, of course, after six years that's straight, how you get good. yeah, that's how it works. And you can start mm -hmm. one of those things at any point in your life. You know, there are certainly yeah. physical limitations. I wouldn't take up professional football in your sixties, but that doesn't mean there's yeah, that doesn't mean there's not an elder person's league of something that you couldn't be the best at in that regard if that's your love. And so, to me, that's been the crucial part. That's I've never been afraid to start over. And <laughs> well, Richard Custer says his powers come from a radioactive spider. That's well, that sure. If you want a shortcut, um, <laughs> and to Richard Custer, I say Patreons assemble and the whip. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but I, you know, in all honesty, if we're you know if we're going to share something of value, that and if there's anything I pass on to my son and to those around me, is that there is there's nothing wrong with being new to something. You know, that doesn't mean you have a lack of talent. It means you have assumptions about other people's learning curve and you're, you're, you're not, you have no respect for the effort they put in. If you have respect yeah. for the effort people put in, then you don't, then the beginning is, is the same for everybody. It's, you know. It's the beginning. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. When I was running marathons, I remember, um. I, reading a lot of articles about people who were runners and I could never get really fast. And so I just read, uh, uh, you know, runner's world. And I realized they're, they have to cover the same amount of ground. They just do it faster, but they still have the same issues. That's right. Like mile 18 is hard. I don't care if you're running it fast or slow. Right. It's hard. And you just learn from other people that just because they have different, um, a, a different acumen for the same, um, thing that you're doing, it doesn't mean that they don't share the same issues and have the same um, trajectories just at a different pace. That's right. Now, the same second, for writing. You can't to add you the, have little, yep. the little part that I was yep. talking just about, mm -hmm. where we... Anyone who thinks you don't have to start at the beginning doesn't want to be an engineer. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, I've seen... You know, my, my dad's an architect. So my dad's an architect. So this is where I'm going to sprinkle some cheese across the top, like that. Howard. Let that cheese sprinkle. Well, here, you know, uh, and maybe this is the time where I interject this. Sure. <laughs> that um, generally we we um, don't watch somebody cook the whole thing. <laughs> we, they just post That's the because picture most of your end. guests are weak, but look at this thing. They are wow. <laughs> look how fluffy and delicious that looks. Beautiful. With a little crust around it. Bravo, bravo. There you go. Now I'm just going to put this back in for a couple of seconds, like for three or four minutes, this and it will melt the cheese and kind of brown it on top. And then you let it sit mm. for 20 minutes, and it'll, which is a crucial part. Doesn't it won't be that fluffy the whole time. Right. And then no, wait. yeah. Settle, as we say. Yes. Simmer down. And, and then I'll settle down. And then I'll tell you the secret to a boiled egg. You want to know the secret <laughs> to a hard boiled sure. egg? Cooking secrets. While you're at it, it's all eggs all the time here. Why not? Twelve minutes exactly. Okay. Start with boiling water. Don't. A lot of people put it in cold water and boil it up, and then time it from there and whatever. You don't know what your pan does, so start with boiling water. Nobody knows what the same, you know, if you have a different pan than I do, it'll screw the whole pooch. So 12 minutes exactly. Okay. Time it. The minute you drop it in, 12 minutes. Go, Siri, set an alarm for 12 minutes. <laughs> as soon as that happens, take the eggs out and put them in a bowl of ice water. Okay. Have a bowl of ice water sitting next to it when it's done. Just pour your egg. Yeah. Take your boiled eggs and put them in there. It's six minutes for a soft boiled egg, 12 minutes for a hard boiled egg. Okay. And then put them in. Secret of eggs. Secret. Put them in, yes. I put them in a bowl of ice water. Dip them in ice water. Just have them for a second. It'll stop them from cooking so the yolk doesn't go right. green. Because you ever had a hard boiled egg and the edge of it is kind of, the yellow is kind of green? That's what that's from. Yep. It's because it continues cooking while it's sitting because it's so hot. So you take it out, put it in ice water. Okay. 
and then run it under ice water as you peel it, and it'll take the egg off, the, the shell off easier. Just tap, tap, tap. Right. Right. Perfect. He's, this is the secret life of eggs. Yeah. Eggs, <laughs> uh, well, I, there's a, um, like, no. I'm sure there's a, like, a Spanish phrase that means, like, eggs are life or something, you know? Whoa, <laughs> but no, We say food is love. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So um, these are, you know, these are kind of crucial. You know, and like Do you little. Think it matters what size your egg is. I don't think it does, Jim. No, it doesn't. Yeah, large eggs no. because it's after ten minutes they're already hardened and sort of enough. It's just a matter of the right consistency. So there's like mm -hmm. there's like a six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen minute egg boiling debate or whatever. But if you start with boiling water, no matter what your pan is, whatever your thing is, okay, and they need to be an inch below water. You you twelve minutes will do it. Time it at 12 minutes okay. and put 12 it minutes. in ice water. Okay. 12 minutes, ice water, and then and then you uh, and then run it under ice uh, cold water while you take the shell off, and it'll be perfect every time. Thank you. All right. We have learned eggs upside down and backwards tonight, people. This has been so educational and meaningful at the same time. So yeah, I, hold on. I, I can see the chat sometimes. It's just I don't know. I, I, you know. <laughs> Educational and meaningful all at the same time. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. we are, we are going to leave you now. Yes. With, <laughs> with your key. With my the we'll sun's just, going I'll down. Take it out of the thing. Oh. Yes, I know. I can see you're getting darker. The sun's going, the down. Sun's going down. There it is. There's oh, oh, it smells so beautiful and the nice little crust around the side of it or whatever. It's going to be tasty. This could be breakfast very tomorrow. Good. You so did it. I'll make this for everybody. I'll put it in the fridge and then I'll warm it up in an oven a little bit before breakfast and we'll have it for breakfast tomorrow. Fantastic. Well, that is awesome. We, we are so grateful. Thank to you, Thank 75 you. minutes. Ago. Yeah. It, you don't get out early with me. You don't know. Nobody, no, gets, don't. nobody gets less <laughs> time. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not a short timer like these. These in and out prison wannabes. Oh, not like that Bob Vesco, Dana Goldberg. They were in and out. No, I'm the no, I'm I'm the Morgan Freeman. You know, I've been I'm a lifer. Now my friend Andy makes eggs in the morning. And yes, one well, thing well, I well, learned well, from him, if you're gonna crawl through shit, they, you're gonna they, need they, a they, good they, breakfast. Will you be sure and send us a picture of your quiche? Absolutely. I will post that and I will post the the recipe itself, yeah. like what's yeah. in there awesome. on my on my Twitter. And I will also post the thing about the eggs, like the hard boiled egg. Um, and I'll put that in there. And, um, and awesome. the avocado too, just for the heck of it, as, to, as a reminder or whatever. And then I'll, I'll tag your show in, in the bottom of it. So you guys, yeah. We are really grateful. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Absolutely. Well, if you want to come back and make pancakes, we're all in. Anytime. Oh, I got, oh. I, anytime now. Oh, I got pancakes. Oh, we do pancakes. <laughs> My pancakes are like restaurant quality pancakes. Like they look like you could use them in a commercial. My pancakes. Wow. Oh yeah. Food <laughs> styling. Remember, remember when we used to make commercials? Oh yeah, I remember those things. I bet you I could do them here. Hello, pancake companies. <laughs> Kodiak Cakes, need somebody to do an ad for you? Somebody muscly who makes pancakes? What do you think? Um, I, can do, I can do the, I can do the Terry Crews while Wow. Oh, look at that. Wow. That came from drinking eggs, people. That's right. Drink your eggs. That's this right. is Drink what your... eggs can do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, appreciate so, you guys. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I'm so grateful. Yeah. It was and great I look forward to doing it again. Yeah. Have a great time. Well, Bye. I'm going to play. Play the outro. Do you have an outro? I'll yeah. just dance. Play the outro. We have credit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys, uh, 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 do you have dinosaurs? Wow. Uh, uh. Sparks, everybody. He's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for it. Check him out. Thanks for hanging out with us. Good job. Crazy. Excellent. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> oh, my God.